The police in Ochre Saint Anne are probing the fatal stabbing of a man in the town on Friday evening. The deceased has been identified as 30 year old Otis Henry, otherwise called Tissy, of Main Street, Pineapple Place, Ochre Henry was reported the attack and stab along Market Street, Ochre about 7 p.m. He later succumbed to his injuries. Mandeville Mayor Donovan Mitchell suggests that JPS embeds you to the post deeper in ground so that they are not dislodged during natural disasters. Mayor of Mandeville Donovan Mitchell is suggesting that utility poles be embedded deeper in the ground to prevent them from being easily uprooted during natural disasters. His recommendation follows the passage of Hurricane Bray last week, which resulted in several downpours across the island. With some residents in Manchester still eagerly awaits poor restoration, Mayor Mitchell stressed the importance of planting the utility poles deeper. He explained that with this hurricane season projected to be an overly active one, the Jamaica Public Service should take steps to protect utility poles. Well, based on the things I've seen, some poles just toppled. I mean, they, they didn't break or anything. It therefore means that they weren't planted deep enough in the soil. And if you're planting poles in certain specific soil, it would believe, I would believe that you would go as deep as possible so that if there's any high wind or you should plant the poles enough that they can withstand certain level of wind. And so I'm hoping that when they're replanting these, you know that they'll go a little deeper than what it is because we are prone to the hurricane and the strong wind in these parts of the country. Community members assist in cleanup activities at Tollgate Primary School. Residents in and around Tollgate area of Clarendon are being commended for their efforts to remove large trees and debris from the compound of the Tollgate Primary School. During the passage of Hurricane Burial, Scores of trees were uprooted at the institution and covered the schoolyard. The institution's principal, Reverend Carl Brown Clark, said following the passage of the hurricane, an inspection was made of the damage done to the school. She told reporters that a message was sent via a WhatsApp group asking for help and for people with power sons to come and assist. One man turned up and gave a cost, and I decided that I would only do the infant department due to the cost but a parent with the equipment was just in time to offer his service free of cost, she stated. In no time, he cut the trees so that they were able to be moved, and I really appreciated it. I was in awe. There are still good people in this world, and parents who look out for the school and the community that their children are a part of, she added. The principal informed that several community members also came by and assisted in the cleanup of the school compound. For her part, Education Officer with the Ministry of Education and Youth, Raquel Ranger Cowan, said the gesture from the community shows that stakeholders' partnership for education is hopeful. I feel a sense of gratitude and hope that we do have good parents within our education system who give freely, she stated, adding that for education to have real success, parents must be a part of the process. Montego Bay Mayor announces 17 million allocation for micro businesses in St. James. Mayor of Montego Bay, Richard Vernon, has announced that $17 million will be allocated to Boston Micro Businesses in St. James. He said through the Local Economic Development Program, each division will receive $1 million. Mayor Vernon stated that people seeking to start small businesses can also benefit. The mayor also noted that over $25 million will be shared across divisions to tackle social issues and enhance the infrastructure. We will also be mobilizing funds to our communities to enhance small businesses. A local economic development program aimed at supporting micro businesses will be done to the tune of $17 million, a million dollars per division. This initiative aims to benefit members of the community who are operating micro businesses or who want to start a micro business. We will also be allocating $25.5 million to all, well, across the divisions so that the councillors, along with the Social Development Commission, can address the social issues that they have in the different divisions and communities and or implement infrastructural projects that will impact the communities in a positive way. 
so more investment for our communities. Council is upset about the NWA working on municipal roads under the SPARC program. A late start to the consultation held in Eastern Hanover recently did not help to ease residents' concerns about the working of the $40 billion shared prosperity through accelerated development to our road network SPARC program. This as moderator of the event, Stephen Reed, used the late start as an excuse to rush through the evening's proceedings and close the session without entertaining questions around the concern that the National Works Agency, NWE, will be implementing agency for the SPARC program, that the funds are inadequate, and which roads would be worked on. The consultation, held at Hopal Sports Complex in the Arcade Housing Scheme in Hanover on Monday, June 24, had a PAC community centre waiting for over an hour for the arrival of a team headed by Reed. After rushing through the preliminaries upon their arrival, Reed, who is on the Constituent Development Fund Program Management Unit, gave an overview of the planned SPARC program. He stated that approximately $150 million will be made available to the Member of Parliament in the first phase of the program for the rehabilitation of minor roads in that constituency. The program will be split into two components. The first component will be that your local roads and then the second component will be that of the main roads he shared. He said the consultation was to collect the names of local roads that need rehabilitation. And for the first component, 20 billion is allocated, and from the start, each MP will receive 150 million towards their constituency, he emphasized. He outlined some of the criteria for the named road to be considered under the program. These include proximity to churches, essential services, schools, police stations, and health facilities, among others, and also whether the road is part of an alternative route to reach a community, as well as the size of the population that the road serves. He then directed the meeting into naming roads. These were many, and came fast and furious from the attendees. The sole recording personnel who came with Reed had a hard time keeping up with the names being forwarded. The meeting almost fell into chaos, however, when George McHale, from the Hartland Grove area in the Chester Castle Division, while at the microphone naming roads in his era in great need of repair, stated the MP Dave Brown should be ashamed to be hearing that so many words in his constituency are in need of work. You should not even present yourself here tonight. If I were you, I would hide, as no MP should feel good to hear that there are so many dilapidated words in his or her constituency, McHale said to a shorted objection from sections of the audience. With the three sitting councils in the constituency present and with Reed trying to close the evening's proceedings, Council for the Sunday Bay Division and sitting Deputy Mayor of Lucy Andrea Dehaney Grant demanded an opportunity to ask some questions to clarify aspects of the program. Foremost among Grant's questions were, which will be the implementing agency under the program, how far can the 150 million stretch, and what of the 10 roads in each division that councils were asked to recommend for the same program. We are hoping that you are thinking about some additional funding for all these roads that are being recommended or, in any case, where some recommendations are being made and nothing will be done to them, she queried. NWA is the implementing agency for the program, so they will be partnering with the municipal corporations, so it's going to be a joint-up approach, Reed explained, much to the disgust of councillors present. He refused to entertain any more questions, however, arguing that he needed to close the meeting as it had had a late start. In his haste to close the meeting, he asked that just one verse of the national anthem be sung, and adjourned the meeting. In an interview to Porter's later, Reed stated that he tried to expedite the meeting to prevent it from evolving into a political scenario. Pressed on the timeline for results from the meeting, he explained, the selection process should be completed by the end of August to September and we're looking forward to implementation in October. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.